We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Shakur Stevenson says that Terrence Crawford can beat Canelo Alvarez at any weight. Wow. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. We unpack. So, undefeated Southpaw Shakur Stevenson did an interview with Fight Hype, and he has some interesting things to say. He says, quote, Bud can do anything. There's nothing he can't do. I feel like there's nothing he can't do. People don't like when I say what I truly believe, but people be wrong and I be right. Shakur Stevenson goes on to say, I think Terrence Crawford, Bud, would beat Canelo at whatever weight. This is why I think he beats Canelo. If he boxes and uses his footwork, Canelo won't be able to find him. I think he'll be too sharp and too fast. Canelo is strong, but you got to be able to land those punches on Bud. And I just don't see him landing, loading up on hooks. Canelo, he is bigger. And people will say I'm tripping. But honestly, I feel like at this stage right now, they don't even got to do it at 168. They could do it at a catch weight of 165 or something. I feel like Bud would beat Canelo. I've been in the gym with him. And this man Crawford been put down heavyweights. I've seen some amazing ish from this dude. I've been trying to tell people, and people don't listen to me, I'm telling you, even his kids are strong, I just think it's in his genes, end quote. Now, I've fully admitted that Terrence Crawford proved me wrong in the Errol Spence realm. I did do a prediction. I truly thought Errol Spence would be able to beat him, and he dominated that fight. For that particular fight, I gave Crawford his credit. He's a bad muff. This is all that needs to be said, right? So... I definitely think people are going to have to, after a performance that he had over Spence, people are going to have to recalibrate and regroup and really assess, does it make sense to pick against Terrence Crawford in a future matchup? However, when it comes to this particular matchup with Canelo Alvarez, and I'm not Canelo Alvarez's number one stand like the, the Canelo Cinnabons and Chupapi Munenos. All I'm going to say is this. I'm not saying it's impossible. We've seen great things historically in boxing. And, you know, fighters from yesteryear, yada, 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 moved up. And, you know, Roberto Duran fought at lightweight and kept moving up to middleweight and all this type of stuff. So we've seen some radical jumps. But I'm not going to really include a lot of that because some of this stuff is like the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. In the 80s, there were no streaming sites there was no netflix there was no way to stream from your phone there was no iphones etc cetera, etc cetera. so there's been this thing called oh yeah that's right evolution and i think the evolution with just nutrition uh supplement supplementation um sports science and sports medicine it's it's just evolved like guys that fought 15 rounders. Some of these guys worked at regular jobs and then they were boxing, like back in Ray Robinson days and stuff. Now you can earn a pretty penny if you're a top level boxer like a Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Deontay Wilder, Canelo, etc. right? You don't have to work at Kroger's and then box part-time. That's why the term cab driver came out in the world of boxing because some fighters were literally cab drivers like they they were part-time boxers and they would get people who had just random nine to five jobs so i said all that to say this bud he's a bad dude he's a great fighter but i'd have to see this i mean i'd have to continue to see because i i still i said the same thing before the fight with errol spitz i thought bud's resume was light you know, you can blame top rank, you blame whatever you want. But in general, there's certain wins, like let's say Gamboa, Victor Postal. Um, you got to give some credit to former champions 
like Kell Brook and Sean Porter, even though these guys were at the, like literally at the end of their career, Kell Brook fought one more time against Amir Khan, somebody who was equally kind of faded and then retired. And Sean Porter retired immediately after Crawford. Goes to show you where they were in their career. So Errol Spence is the breath of fresh air in terms of resume name that I think Bud needed to show people, you know, his skills at the highest level. Even though Errol Spence himself was coming off a 14, 15 month layoff and car wrecks in the past and stuff like that. But I'm still going to give him credit for that because nobody did. No one had even dropped Errol Spence and he got dropped three times by Bud and stopped. And no one made Errol Spence look like that in any of his past fights. So that's a certified signature win despite the 14-month layoff that Errol Spence was on. Fine. But Bud said he's only in the game for, you know, certain amount of time. And he's he wants to retire on top, things like that. So if he's going to retire soon, I think he should keep this trend up of fighting the bigger fights and the better names like Errol Spence's and, you know, less David Avenesian mean machine type style fights and fight some bigger names on his way out. I mean, you look at a guy like Manny Pacquiao. Um, I want to, I, I believe uh, the, 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 that one, uh, the party by two, 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 two. I mean, this man, he was with top rank for probably the bulk of his career, similar to Terrence Crawford. And towards the end, he was getting names like the Jesse Vargas's and Brandon Rios. Those weren't really the fights that people were requesting. But career-wise, he had great names like um, Marco Antonio Barrera, Eric Morales, and you know Juan Manuel Marquez, stuff like that. But towards the end, people were growing tired of the Jesse Vargas and Chris Algieri-style names. So his last fight with top rank was against Jeff Horn. And after the Jeff Horn fight, he went to Al Heyman and finished his career with PBC. So Pacquiao retired with over 70 fights, moved up eight weight classes, right? Has an illustrious resume, fought the Floyd Mayweathers, the Marquezes, etc. And he had 70 fights, which is more than really anybody current is, is really doing or trending to do, right? And he was 40-something, and he's still fighting Keith Thurman. He fought Broner as his first PBC fight. Then he fought Keith Thurman. Then he fought against your Dennis Ugas, but he has signed up to fight Errol Spence Jr. when he was undefeated. So I would like to see Crawford try to go out in a similar fashion. And I don't know if it'll happen, but Pacquiao went out how he came in and he won most of those fights, except for he lost. He won the Broner fight. He won the Thurman fight. The Errol Spence fight didn't happen because of Errol's eye and the injury. But then he lost the your Dennis Ugas fight. So Crawford, I think he should build from the Errol Spence fight. You know what I mean? And Jerron Boots Ennis is a name. Stanny Onis, maybe an Errol Spence rematch if the Errol Spence rematch has to happen because the Errol Spence is stubborn, right? And wants the rematch. Even fights at 54. Like, it looked like Crawford struggled to make weight, in my opinion. So Tim Zhu fights or... Just any fight like that. I know he said he wanted to fight Jermell Charlo, but Jermell Charlo is is preoccupied. So me personally, I think there's very, very good fights and big fights. Virgil Ortiz may be an option for Terrence Crawford as well. There's great fights for Terrence Crawford available to him. But regarding this Canelo situation, I know Shakur, that's the homie, and Shakur's saying this. I'd have to see it. I'd have to see him what Shakur is saying because I come from a school of boxing where weight does matter. Like, listen, I know I've heard Floyd Mayweather say weight don't matter and everybody say weight doesn't matter in boxing. And it's true and false at the same time. And I'll explain. It's true in the sense of if you are truly skilled, you can negate somebody's weight, somebody being bigger than you. Like if a guy who is... um smaller but extremely skilled fights someone who's unskilled and bigger then yeah the weight wouldn't matter or within reason i think weight doesn't matter but the whole to me and this is the thing for me this is just my personal opinion 
And I know some of the people who've listened to my channel, they're going to be like, oh, you're hating on Crawford. I'm not the one pushing Crawford to fight Canelo Alvarez. But if Crawford's team or people and people like Shakur Stevenson are egging it on by saying he can beat Canelo at any weight, then, hey, you know, I would have to see that because I do think Crawford is talented. But we're talking about Crawford, 147 pounder. And Canelo's been fighting at 168. So if you're going to say he can beat him at any weight or a catch weight of 165, you know, let's see it. Period. I mean, Shakur Stevenson, he's saying stuff like, oh, Crawford put down heavyweights and this, that, and the third. I mean, that may be true, but there's also rumors about Crawford having been hurt by non-heavyweights like Brian Norman or, you know, having wars with him or good work with Carlos Adamez and, and different things like that. So I, I relegate sparring to sparring. It's just training, it's practice to help ready you for your career and ready you for a fight or stay ready, blah, blah, blah. So I don't really put too much stock into sparring. I don't know the time frame. I don't know what heavyweight, you know, it is what it is. I hear sparring stories all the time. But sparring is sparring. Fighting Canelo at 168 or 165 with no headgear to me, it does sound crazy. And here's the thing. This is Crawford's homie, Shakur Stevenson, who's putting that out there and saying this. Crawford, he's doing recent interviews, and he's kind of saying something different. We unpack. Let's unpack it. Terrence Crawford, a recent interview, says he's likely to retire soon, and he's saying that essentially he's kind of tapped out at 154 pounds like that would probably be the last weight class but it's intriguing to say the least when you have someone who's basically team Crawford which is Shakur Stevenson and he's throwing that out that Bud can beat him and I know Shakur is a confident dude Shakur himself said he would beat Canelo and people lost their minds about it I don't doubt if Shakur Stevenson or Terrence Crawford were naturally Canelo's size, I don't think they would lose. So if that was the statement, then I could get with that because, I mean, Crawford, he's way too dynamic for a Canelo Alvarez who has slow feet. I call them cement shoes, cement feet. You know, he would have he would have major problems if they were naturally the same size. But if we're talking about Crawford moving up from 147, past 54, past middleweight 160, all the way to 168 to beat Canelo, again, I would have to see that because to me, it sounds kind of crazy. I'm not a big fan of weight class hopping and jumping. So if anybody's talking like that, then I would have to see it. That's the best way to put it. Not come close or he did well or he was winning. I mean, because that Amir Khan was winning versus Canelo too for four rounds. And then in the fifth round, he started getting touched. And in the sixth round, he was knocked out unconscious. So I don't know. I just think Team Crawford, it would probably benefit if they're kind of all, even though Shakur is not directly, directly Team Crawford, you know, in terms of like Bo Mack or Crawford himself. But it seems like it would be better to be on one accord because the more that people affiliated with you or Tim Bradley or anybody really entertains Terrence Crawford Canelo, which to me sounds crazy. I'm not even the one pushing for it unless you raise my antenna by saying that Crawford can beat Canelo despite the weight class jump. Again, at that point, I would just have to see it and I would pay money for it. It's a big fight, two big names, etc. I think we're getting to a point in boxing where people are treating boxing like almost like a video game. Clarissa Shields wants to fight Keith Thurman. That's another fight, just me personally. That sounds crazy. And I know Clarissa Shields is a beast and quote, and she spars dudes, but sparring is sparring. To fight a former 2X champion, a guy like Keith Thurman with cracks that messed up Mario Barrios' face and, you know, drop guys like Leonard Bundu, and then to have a different gender fight him, to me, again, I'd have to see it, you know? Like, I'm not even, this is not even a fight prediction. I'm just saying, when I'm hearing these things, w the way my brain is set up, I would literally need to see it. I'd have to see Clarissa Shields go in there, you know, 
fight Keith Thurman with the same gloves and, you know, no handicaps and beat him. And I'd have to see Terrence Crawford move to 65 or 68. And it'd probably be 68 because Canelo would be the A side. He's not going to give you anything. He's not going to make a catch weight for you, you know? So to me, I think it's, it's a conversation that really doesn't need to exist. But since people are talking about it, I guess I will too. Let me know what you guys think. Is my read crazy? I know I got the Errol Spence prediction wrong, but how would the fight with Crawford play out versus Canelo? And again, I'm not saying like Canelo's my dude. I think Crawford has more skills and he does more. But I also believe that it gets to a point where some of that stuff can be nullified if you give up too much weight, right? Errol Spence... He lost bad to Crawford. He's also on a 14-month layoff. These things don't apply for Canelo Alvarez. Canelo has been fighting pretty frequently, you know, sometimes even fighting three, four times a year. So he's he's stayed active. He has money, so he has resources to train, right? He's not off inactivity. He has a great chin. He's fought bigger, in my opinion, bigger punchers than Crawford, like Gennady Golovkin. And Crawford has his own style that... You could say Canelo hasn't fought before, but Crawford to fight Canelo would be giving up a lot of size. Again, let me know what you guys think of Shakur Stevenson saying that his boy Terrence Crawford would be too much for Canelo at any way. Pay they, pay they, you want, we unpack. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation Fives adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel gym or lifestyle headphones the hibernations got you covered the new hibernation fives link in the description customize the way you hear the world welcome to the nation are you tired of your youtube videos not getting any views well consider tubebuddy I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.